Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to do a real quick video on time management, how to survive nursing school when you have a personal life and you have assignments due. So for me, I have a family. I have a family, the husband and three kids under six. And so this may speak to some of you, but even if you do not have a family uh, with a husband and kids and you work besides going to nursing school, um, this could possibly work for you. The main thing that you need to know is you need calendars on calendars on calendars. That's going to help you get organized, obviously, and prioritize things. So what I would suggest is going to Amazon, buying one of those big magnetic calendars, and posting it on your refrigerator. This way you can let your family know what's going on with you and also keep track of important dates such as appointments or times you would like to be with friends or any family gatherings that are scheduled, birthdays, you know, all of that still happens and goes on while you're in nursing school. So put that all on your calendar. It's also nice because you let your family know when you're going to be at school um, every semester and so they don't have to look for you or call you while you're in the middle of class like they do me. And so that has helped me tremendously. On top of that calendar, I've also kind of strayed away from using the Michaels calendar or planner that I bought during before my first semester. If you've seen that video, I had this nice kind of rose gold, black and white personal planner that I used. But as I progressed in the program, I've kind of strayed away from that and started using Google Calendar. It might be Google Calendar for you or whatever the heck Apple uses. Use it. Sync it with your phone. Sync it with your phone. Sync it with your computer. Sync it with every electronic device so you can get notifications like I am right now. I'm getting one about when you have exams, when you have papers due. That's where I basically put all of my assignments for the day and also keep track of all the appointments that my kids have and any other important dates that I might have so that I can get notified because I always have my phone with me and I'm always on my computer studying or whatnot. So that has helped tremendously as well. On top of that, one of the things you can do is to schedule your meals one month in advance. So just take out a piece of paper or a paper calendar and start jotting down meals or dinner that you'll have for particular days. That way, when your husband or whomever you live with or when you yourself get home from a tired day of nursing school or work or whatever, you will already know what the meal for dinner will be. And no one has this struggle to think of it or take out anything to be thawed out or whatever. Meal prep will most likely be done at the beginning of the day or taken out or thawed out, whatever it may be, because you will have already thought of the meal to be cooked. Use that crock pot if you got one, especially in the winter months. That saves time tremendously. Aside from that, let me think, because this video is unedited and I'm just going off the fly here, off the top of my head. What else? Getting ahead as much as possible of any assignments that you have. I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but this is so crucial to having some you time, some free time, some time to actually be present when your kids are around or when your friends are talking to you. You won't be thinking of assignments due because you'll already have done them. Get ahead with what whatever you can. For me, we have Kaplan exams that are due, and these we do on our own, on our own time. Um, we can take them once and not score 100%, but you must, by that due date, you must have 100%. And so all you do is go back through the questions you've missed and look at the rationales and then go right back again and take the 30 question test again and until you get 100%. As long as it's in or 100% by the due date. So these types of exams, if you have ATI or Kaplan, you can get those done easily. So get those done ahead of time, well in advance. If you're also looking for things like study guides, if your teachers offer study guides, I would suggest looking on Course Hero. Course Hero, you could either purchase it or they have this offer where you can upload 10 documents as long as they're not co copyrighted. And this is also not sponsored by Course Hero. I don't have enough subscribers to be noticed at the moment. But um, you can also upload 
documents, 10 documents from any of the courses that you've taken previously that are not copyrighted. Course Hero will review them to see if they're okay to post on their website. And if you post up to 10, you get five free opportunities to download documents that you may find on their website that may be beneficial to you. For me, I found study guides for my current course that previous students have uploaded, and so that has been helpful. And when a teacher finally does upload the study guide, I have noticed that the study guides are the same. They're just recycling it. And yeah, so that has given me the opportunity to study well in advance of the test date and even before the study guide comes out. So I would suggest checking that out. Um, studying, you know, even when you get home after lecture, and just keeping the information fresh in your mind so you don't have to do a cram session or study, use up all the days right before your test date to um, focus on studying. You can be free, you know, and that's what it's about that will get you through nursing school. Just staying sane and staying balanced and having that time for you and family and nursing school. So you just have to find that balance. Also, I'd like to recommend on that calendar to also schedule in some time for you to get some exercise because exercise is really gonna help you with your stress level and your anxiety level while you're in the nursing program. For me, that has been a problem because um, it's like when I'm free, I just wanna rest. But Push yourself to at least schedule 30 minutes of just walking, listening to music, looking at YouTube videos, reading a book on your phone as you walk, you know, on a treadmill or whatever, or join a gym that's cheap, like Planet Fitness for $10, something like that, just to get your mind off of things. And it's a part of self-care, which is so important in this program. So that is my, those are my few short tips that I can offer you um, when you're in nursing school and just being organized, staying on top of things, and also planning, thing, well, planning things well in advance so that you can have some you time and divide your time up and have a balanced life. Anyway, hope you found this video helpful and I hope that it's helped somebody. Um, I'll be making more videos in my free time, but y'all know I'm in nursing school right now, my fourth semester. This is supposedly supposed to be the most easiest semester, but I'm still on vacation mode, so. I'm trying to get over this fog. I have an exam tomorrow, my first exam in this semester, and I don't know how I feel. A part of me feels a little bit too confident, and that's scary. So <laughs> that just tells me I'm not really focusing because I really am not. I'm just, I've been all over the place. I've been watching a Super Bowl. I've been just not doing what I feel I should be doing. But time will tell when I take this test tomorrow. But anyway, I hope you all are having a great beginning of the semester. Um, for me, I have just started clinicals last week and it was awesome. Although we had been there more hours than I could stand last week. Um, we had to do our, we had, first day we had, let me just go into it, y'all. This was supposed to be a one about one thing, this video, but um, I guess I'll just go into it to update. Um, so we were given one patient at clinical on the first day and we had to chart a full head to toe assessment, perform and chart a full head to toe assessment, you know, do everything that a fourth semester student can do, which is basically everything and, um, get that all done by, what was it? 2.30 for the first day because we were going to learn something in preclinical. So our clinical days are from 6.30 to 3.30, uh, sorry, 4.30. And so we were off the floor at 2.30. So it's just been longer, a longer period. Then the next day, we had two patients, had to do the same things, chart two head-to-toe assessments, chart and complete two head-to-toe assessments, as well as give them all the care that they need during the day. And so it's kind of hard for me to get my bearings and to get back into the flow of things, kind of look up their meds, all of that. It was just hard. Um, hopefully this week will be better. This week I am assigned to go to the ICU and also be student auditor, student safety auditor, meaning I have to go through the patient's rooms of all of my clinical groups, um, every patient that they have and look and see if their room meets the safety requirements. And um, that's basically it. If the tube 
the tubings on their IV needs to be changed or they're not labeled or their IVs on their patients, their catheters aren't uh, dated, then I would dock them for that. If their board isn't updated, the board in the patient's room isn't updated with the initials of when they've rounded, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then they would get docked for that too. But anyway, it's going to be a nice week. My last experience in the ICU last semester wasn't all that great. I just felt like, I don't know, for me, it just felt like a, a place of no hope, like the land of no return almost. And my uh, nurse wasn't all that interested in teaching. So um, hopefully this time around, it will be a different experience at this hospital. So far, ER is looking better than ICU, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, hope you all have a great week. Until next video, I will see you later. Bye.